Hello everyone, uh, this is Quintus Hazard and I've been told about how to get the true ending in Pester Quest. So, if we do this, then we actually have to click on them. Ah! Wait, wait, hold the fucking phone. Who is in charge of this story? Not Ultimate Dirk, not the director, and seriously not that guy who got shoved into a room with a wolf head. It's you, it's always been you. Why are you just doing what they told you to do? There has to be a third option. There's always a third option. When the scratch happened, everything should have been erased. Everything was erased, except it wasn't because someone intervened. Jade drew all of her friends close to her and kept them safe. She saved them. The first time you tried to bring Jade with you when you teleported, Beck didn't let you, but then later he did. Jade told you that you'd just been acting like a normal dog. Jade told you that Godcat had just been acting like a good little kitty, almost like their powers were gone. You pace in a quick circle. And you hear Dad's car pulling up from behind and zap out of there before you can get caught again. Zap. You've still got the beta clutched in your hand, but you're alone on Dave's roof underneath the blazing Houston sun. Nobody's going to bother you up here. There's something that's teasing just at the edge of your understanding, and if you could only reach it... You need help. You need someone who knows about weird shit. Like a lock clicking on your brain, you understand what you have to do. Zap. Aradia! Oh, it's you! How's it going? You look a little tired. You ask Aradi if she's been watching recently, if she knows what's been going, uh, going down in your part of the neighbourhood. She shakes her head. I lost track of you when you hopped universes. I'm about to try and get myself out of canon for good and it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass. So I've been trying to conserve my energy. Oh right, yeah, you know about that. She raises an eyebrow. Don't worry about that, actually. You know some law is all. You might have seen what's going to happen to Aradia next. Actually, she doesn't have too much to worry about. She and Solix are fine. Actually, they're probably more fine than everyone else. That's good to know, I guess. So, did you figure out what was going on with your friend's situation? Yeah, you tell Aradia what's been going on with your friend's situation. Wow. Yeah. And you're going to do it? You're going to erase this timeline? Because if you are, then no offence, I might head out of canon a little early. That's just the thing. You think you might have a plan. Oh? You tell her the plan. Does she think it'll work? A slow, brilliant smile paints a sunrise across her face. I have no idea, <laughs> but I'd love to watch. Zap. Uh, come on. Is Baldi gonna turn up? The green sun. Oh, hold up. The green sun spreads out below you like a giant radioactive gumball that absolutely wants to tear you into a million greasy pieces. You can feel it tugging at all your organs, twisting up all the words inside you, making a mess of the themes, dragging motifs screaming to the surface. This is the single largest source of raw narrative mess in this multiverse and it should be killing you. Do you actually need to do anything? Uh, you sort of just want to survive here with you in case you die. You don't want to die alone. That's fair. Hey. If you die, I'll pick up your bones for you. Thanks, Aradia. She smiles. See on the other side, you say? You're not sure who you're talking to. You're guessing this is going to be pretty bad. Zap. It's... well, it's not... not bad. It's not pain, exactly, because when you're inside the green sun, you don't think you have nerve endings anymore. You are just a consciousness floating in the miasma of causation. You aren't sure how this is supposed to work. Should you maybe start thinking about your friends like you are in the animes, drawing strength from the power of your social links? You think about John, Rose, and your good friend Dave? Fuck, ouch, thinking too much hurts. You're not going to be able to count on anime cliches for this one, you guess. So you don't think about your friends. For once you think about yourself, the impossibility that is you, protagonist, reader, carrier of the story, maybe not every story, but this one. You've been erased so many times. You look across the rise and fall of the story and see just how many mistakes you've made. All the times you've broken your friend's trust or betrayed them or hell, even killed them. You reach across <coughs> those to all of those yous, your what-ifs, your do-overs. You let the blazing energy overtake you. You open yourself up and everything goes green. And you better be on your best behaviour, Orphaner. If this partnership is going to work out... Forget this guy, Vriska. We could do this ourselves. Could you at least give a guy a chance to respond to a couple of... What's that? Pounce! Come here, Kiki! I'm home! Nabata, this cave is far too small for someone with a height as strong as mine. Pounce? Equius, what's that? Oh. Anyway, that's why I don't eat corn dogs anymore. What the fuck? 
Is this a normal future thing? Earthquakes and shit? I guess that's a normal whatever thing, but we don't get many of them in Houston. I don't think that's an earthquake. Autoresponder? No seismic activity detected in the area. So you're telling me I wrote this? In another history? Yes, as far as I'm aware. Incredible. It's very boring. I think it's brilliant. I mean... Oh shit, what's happening? The green sun pulses around your slowly collapsing being, and as you feel it subsume you, you feel yourself unspooling, swallowed in light. You think of how you came to be here, where you are right now, and the choices you made along that path. What are the odds that the you that prevailed in this... <coughs> that the you that prevailed is this one? There's probably something that could be mathed out, but you're too busy eating the fucking sun with your whole body to <coughs> figure it out. Instead, you sink into the feeling of connections that hold you together. The bonds you created are threaded through your arms and your belly and your heart. Your body is nothing, consumed by flame, and yet... You feel yourself start to become. Zap. The mail goes in the box. Okay, get ready, this is the best part of the movie. All the classic memes come from this part. John, every part of this movie is hot trash. Oh, it's not that bad. I want to see the guy put the bunny back in the box. This movie is so bad that the drones are approaching your neighbourhood. It's too late for the human race. Darkness seethes at this timeline and in the distance you hear what might be cracks splinters through space-time. Reality is compressing and falling apart around you in a cacophony of breaking glass. All of your friends, all of their dreams rendered away to nothing. All of it's unravelling. No. No. It doesn't disappear. I don't let it. I am bigger than this story, but I am also inside the story, so I gather it up and I keep it close to me, and as soon as I remove it from causation, it's like it never happened. I take the timeline and I lock it away. That's what it is. It is a locked timeline, and I am its guardian. Its first guardian. <gasps> I knew him! And they become a first guardian! I knew it! Holy shit! Is this the end? Thanks for playing. That's... That's... That's it? Oh, wow. That's it. That's Pester Quest. I feel sad now. I feel sad that it's all over. Shit, man. Wow. Hell. I guess that's it then. I guess there's no more Pester Quest and my channel stops being popular. I guess that's it. I'm sad now. Oh. Well. I guess that's it. No more Pester Quest. Well. I guess it's goodbye now and until I upload the videos I was going to make for everyone. I feel sad now. It was really good but I just feel really sad.